Hey everybody, hope and pray that you're doing well today as we come to our word from the word. And today that word is everlasting, everlasting. Finishing up this week, talking, uh, continuing our talk in prayer uh, this this whole month um, and looking forward to it this year as we go forward. But uh, talking about prayers in Genesis right now specifically and and it's one of those things as we come here to this passage, we we find Abraham and uh, Abimelech. Uh, and this is Genesis chapter 21. And and this is uh, much later than uh, our previous conversations about, uh, you know, the lies that they had told that Abraham and Sarah had told and what we even talked about Wednesday night. This is much later. And um, so as they're coming together, we'll find that they're they make a covenant. And it's basically, you see, uh, I encourage you as always to read the whole chapter. We're just going to deal with the last two verses. But uh, as as they're making this covenant, the reason that Abimelech comes to Abraham is because he sees that God has been so good to him. And, and one note here as well is Abimelech is more of a title, uh, kind of like Pharaoh. So we're not even sure if this is the same Abimelech or not. Uh, very well could be, but it very well could be somebody different. But that really has no bearing on um, the the context of what we're talking about today. And it's because he, he sees that God has blessed Abraham, and so he wants to make a covenant with him. Well, soon after they make the covenant, you see Abraham reporting that um, there has, you know, his uh, Abimelech servants have seized one of his wells, a well that he dug himself. And, and there's a conversation that goes on there. They make everything right. And then we're going to come to the last two verses. And that brings us to our focus, which is the prayer, or even conversations with God. And Genesis chapter 21, the last two verses, verses 33 and 34 says, Then Abraham planted a tamarisk tree in Beersheba. And they're called on the name of the Lord, the everlasting God. And Abraham stayed in the land of the Philistines many days. Now, see, you just take just that part that everything else has led up to this. I mean, he's talking about, uh, you know, all the time that Abraham has been traveling. He's been more of a wanderer. And it's amazing that as you follow back through, and this is the importance of the whale in the story is that he's always either digging a well or building an altar. And I mean, one of those is that water is a necessity of physical life. But the altar is where he spent time in worship and conversation with God, which was something that he needed spiritually speaking. It's the spiritual health and well-being. And so often you and I, you know, we, we take advantage or uh, maybe uh we overlook the fact that, man, we need all this physical stuff. I mean, we need, uh, you know, food and, and water and shelter and clothing and all these things. And, and that's what we need. And so, you know, we'll focus on those things a lot. But when we're focused on those and then we enjoy even so much more than what we need, you know, God has just over uh, and abundantly blessed us, uh, especially here in America. We have just been so, so richly blessed. But yet we forget that our spiritual well-being is more important than our physical well-being. See, our spiritual well-being is of the utmost importance. So I think even as Abraham was wandering and, and uh, you know, all by the direction of God and even uh, being a, a kind of a farmer, a cattleman, he is he has to move the livestock from place to place because, you know, once the uh, the nourishment and the water it has has dried up there and there's no more food, they have to move on to somewhere else. But isn't it amazing that here we find for the first time in Scripture that he calls on the Lord. But he calls him to something different. He says that he calls on Yahweh, the everlasting God. El Alam, L-O-L-A-M. And, and as he calls on El Alam, He's calling on the everlasting God. You know, I was thinking about even for this, I mean, as much as we've been talking about lately, how, I mean, look, we talk about everything. I mean, we'll talk about sports. We talk about the news. We talk about the weather. We talk about politics. We talk about, uh, you know, anything under the sun. And we'll spend, I mean, we'll invest a lot of time and money and research into different aspects of these things. But how much time do we spend talking to the one who will never change? So, I mean, we talk about the weather. It changes each and every day. 
So maybe it's because we feel like that gives us something new to talk about. But even as much as you and I know that, you know, the way that God has built us, the way that God has made us and breathed life into us is that we enjoy some structure. We enjoy something to be constant. That's one thing that we have learned, especially in the last year, that man, when, when things shake up our schedule and what we're used to, we, we don't like it. You know, uh, some change is OK, but all this change at one time is really hard to deal with. But there's one constant. There's one thing that is always the same. See, we'll, we'll worry about all those other things that are constantly changing and we'll try to put our hope and faith in those things. And they only let us down, only make us feel like we've been on a roller coaster because it's up and down, back and forth. But instead, how much time are we spending talking to the everlasting God? Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. As Isaiah said, hey, haven't you heard? God is everlasting. You understand that we serve a living Savior. The God of all creation, who's always been and always will be. And he's been the same the whole time and will continue to be the same. So today, I, I want to encourage you as you spend time in prayer today and even going into this weekend. I pray that you would spend time thanking God for being the one constant in your life. No matter what else has happened, good, bad, ugly, indifferent, whatever, the one constant has always been God. I encourage you to trace back the steps in your life and see how God has been there every moment through the dark valleys and through the uh, beautiful mountaintops. And then spend some time thanking him, praising him. Don't just worry about building your well for physical nourishment. Let's build an altar and pray to the everlasting God. God bless you. And I pray you have a great, great day.